guys welcome back to my channel i have been getting a lot of questions on how to go or get to sese islands and today i've decided to share with you exactly how i planned my amazing trip to sese islands i'll be giving you all the details on how to get there so let's dive right in so i couldn't wait to share my experience with all of you so let's start with the planning process so i first did some research about the island and what to expect i didn't really find so much relevant information i was looking for so i had to talk to a friend from park Shubil. you can check out a video i did on park Shubil, and she gave me heads up including the best time to visit so the best time to visit is basically all year round. However, if you plan to do water activities, it is recommended to visit during the dry season. So whether you prefer the warm months or for water activities or in the mild season for relaxing in the beach, it's essential to pick a time that suits your preferences. So for me, it was just a short two day getaway. So that didn't count as much. So let's go to the accommodation options. Now there are various accommodation options from luxury resorts to budget friendly guest houses. It has a wide range of options that suits at least everyone's budget and style. So what I did, I looked out on booking.com and I booked this amazing cottage. It's called Philo. And after my booking was confirmed, they offered me actually all the details I was looking for. Um, during my planning process so they offered all the details on how to get to the island all the available ships actually all the ships available the ferries the private boats they gave me all that option so i chose to go with a uh, mv kalangala boat which also they recommended and um, the departure times and they ensured me that they'll be waiting for me the time the ferry arrives on that particular day so this accommodation came with breakfast and also it had very good internet access it had fruits all over and so my tip for you is that make sure you book accommodation in advance especially if you're planning to visit during busy periods sometimes you may find they're all booked so make sure you look that out so next we have transportation so from Kampala to Nachiwogo landing site, I used a private taxi. However, there are public taxis available. Uh, you could go to Old Taxi Park and just get a taxi to Entebbe Town. Or you can get these Entebbe Express taxis. They could drop in Entebbe Town or Kitoro. That basically costs about 5,000 shillings, approximately $1.4. USD and from wherever they stop you either in Entebbe town or Kitoro town you can just get a border to Nachiwogo landing site that should be less than 3,000 shillings it should be less than one dollar you shouldn't go beyond 3,000 shillings because it's close and that pretty much will depend on your bargaining power with a border border guy since I chose the MV Kalangala ferry, its departure time from Nachiwogo is 2 p.m. So you need to get there before 2 p.m. and book your ticket. So there are two types of tickets. We have the ordinary ticket, which is basically 10,000 shillings. That's approximately 2.6 US dollars. And the first class go for 14,000 Uganda shillings, which is approximately 3.7 us dollars so this ship takes three and a half hours to reach kalangala or sese islands so after arriving in kalangala i found the resort staff ready waiting at the landing site to the resort so, however you can also opt for a quicker option like uh, in terms of trans transportation like the speed boats and other small boats there are other small boats that are way faster. So depending on your preference, you can choose what is most convenient for you in terms of water transport to Sese Island. There are boats that take around one hour, 1 hour, 1.5 hours, I think. So you can 
choose based on your preference. So within the island, the transportation we used most was basically foot bish <laughs> walking. However, for long distances, we used the border border and my tour guide has his personal motorbike. So that's what we used most. And then the last part is the activities on the islands. So while I was going there, I had no specific activity planned, but I just wanted to explore the island. But I found out a couple of activities that my tour guide shared with me, including community walk, forest walks, bird watching. Since this place has a number of water birds and forests, there are beaches, uh, there are historical sites. For example, Bugala Island. I made a video about Bugala Island. Go check it out. There are th stuff like quad biking, sport fishing, boat cruises. Uh, you could go to the palm oil plantation, the stone beach, there are mini waterfalls, etc. There are so many. I couldn't finish them in just those two days. I had to actually book one extra day to go to the stone beach because it was quite a distance from where we were. So basically, the Sese Islands has a lot of activities for all types of travelers. Whether you just want adventure, whether you just want to enjoy the sunsets, whether you just want to experience the culture, the communities, but there's at least something there for you. So don't forget to check out more on my blog, topcoadventures.com, for more of these travel stories. See you in the next video.